from massively spooky mansions whose aged halls are supposedly roamed by the spirits of their former owners, to quaint abodes harboring impressive histories and all manner of supernatural activity. Are you ready to explore our third list of some of the most chillingly haunted places in California? Number 5. The Battery Point Lighthouse the Battery Point Lighthouse, also recognized as the Crescent City Lighthouse and located on a small islet off of Lighthouse Way in Crescent City, California, is an active navigational aid recognized for being one of the first lighthouses on the whole of the California coast. Historically, in 1855, Congress would first grant funds for the establishment of a light on the small spit, which is actually connected to Battery Point by way of Isthmus, which can actually be traveled by foot at low tide. In 1856, the light's fourth order Fresnel lens was illuminated, with Theopolis Magruder selected as the site's first keeper. In 1953, Wayne Piland would be recognized as its last keeper before operations were automated. In the 1964 Alaska earthquake, which was actually the strongest earthquake ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere, would result in tsunamis that battered the coast. However, the light would survive. While the following year, the modernized beacon was shut off, in 1982, the weathered lighthouse tower was once again illuminated as a private aid to navigation. In the present, the Battery Point Lighthouse Museum, which is operated under the Del Norte Historical Society, remains open to the public daily between April and September, offering tours from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and more limited touring options on weekends between October and March, with the island accessible only when low tide permits. On a side note, it's highly recommended any wishing to visit the light research tide schedules beforehand, as waters can very quickly rise, at which point the land bridge to the islet is swallowed up by the cold dark of the ocean. The Battery Point Lighthouse has long been surrounded in stories of the supernatural, with caretakers over the years and staff and visitors into more recent times reporting disembodied bootsteps on the stairs, the phantom smell of cigar smoke, and instances of a rock chair on site that rocks on its own. For years, it was thought that a single spirit was responsible for the happenings on lighthouse grounds. However, more recently, a paranormal investigation concluded that Battery Point was actually infested not just by one ghost, but by three, being those of two adults and of a single child, the latter of whom has a habit of playing small pranks on the living. Also reported across the spit are the constant feelings of being watched or followed, the sensation of being tapped on the arm by fingers unseen, and instances of personal possessions going missing only to turn up later in strange places. Number 4. The Leland Stanford Mansion the Leland Stanford Mansion, located off of Inn Street in Sacramento, California, is a historic manor and state park recognized for its formerly acting as residence to 8th Governor of California and founder of Stanford University, Leland Stanford, and that now serves as a reception center for the California government itself, as well as as office to the governor. Historically, the mansion was first constructed in 1856 under wealthy Sacramento building merchant Shelton C. Fogus. In June of 1861, just preceding his election as governor, Leland Stanford would make purchase of the property, and from 1871 to 1872, the Stanford family would issue a series of repairs, remodels, and modernizations of the residence, during which time the house was actually raised 12 feet in elevation to prevent flooding off the Sacramento River. With an additional story added to both the structure's top and bottom levels. Following Leland's passing in 1893, his estate would be overseen by his widow Jane Lathrop Stanford. In 1900, the family would donate the property to the Roman Catholic Diocese of Sacramento, and until 1978, the site would be maintained as a children's home. Later the same year, the expanse would be acquired by the California government in order to serve as the Leland Stanford Mansion State Historic Park and as the capital's ceremonial reception center. And following 14 years of rehabilitation in 2005, it was open to the public for tours and events. 
The mansion and its associated park grounds remain open into the present, offering tours, exhibits and programs, events, museum collections, and, according to a host of local ghost stories, its fair share of hauntings, with mansion goers commonly reporting doors that open and close on their own, disembodied footsteps heard from empty halls and rooms, and the unnerving sensations of being watched, followed, touched, or even of having one's neck breathed down by a presence unseen. From 1862 to 1863, Leland Stanford would serve as governor of California, and on May 14th of 1868, the Stanfords would welcome their son, Leland Jr., into the world. However, in 1883, tragedy would strike when Leland Jr. succumbed to typhoid, perishing while in Florence, Italy. Legend tells that following his passing, his mother Jane would attempt to contact her dead son through way of seances and other mystical practices, and eventually, that the spirit of Junior actually manifested to Leland Sr. in the night and told his father that he was destined to create a school for the betterment of society, which resulted in the establishment of Stanford University. Many still accept the ghost of Leland Jr. remains on site, and while no one has since viewed his manifestation per se, many who frequent the space describe feeling ever in his presence. Number 3. The Preston School of Industry the Preston School of Industry, also referred to as the Preston Castle and located off of Palm Drive in Ione, California, is a historic building that once served as a reform school that's recognized as one of the most significant examples of Romanesque revival architecture in the iconic Motherload region of the state. Historically, this castle was first constructed in 1894 and was opened as an admin building for the Preston School of Industry, a reform school for boys. On a side note, the style of architecture chosen was actually intended to make the school look like, well, a school rather than a prison. The castle would remain in use until 1960, after which it fell under looming threat of demolition. However, from 1960 through 1968, a group of concerned local women would rally to preserve the site, and while the state would eventually agree to leave the building standing, they would avidly refuse to inject any funding into its restoration or reuse. The property would remain vacant and would be left to stand the tests of both weather and time until September of 2001, when the Preston Castle Foundation and lease the old grounds. In April of 2009, the site would begin offering overnight ghost tours, and in 2014, the foundation was officially granted full ownership of the prominent structure and its associated 12.91 acres. In the present, Preston Castle remains open to the public for tours and events, from which most of the proceeds are pushed towards future repairs under the foundation, whose mission is to preserve, rehabilitate, and utilize the structure, all while maintaining the history of the school and of all those whose lives were connected. Chillingly, in more recent times, those who have toured the Preston School of Industry have reported a range of chilling supernatural activity, including doors that slam shut on their own, objects that move inexplicably or even float through midair, disembodied voices and footsteps, and odd sounds from within the walls. One popular legend tells of burglar Samuel Goines, who arrived at Preston in July of 1918, and who, within his first year, had attempted escape on three separate occasions. On his third attempt, on April 19th of 1919, and at just 19 years of age, Preston guard John Kelly would shoot Sam in the back, killing him just two months short of his release date. Additionally, in 1950, Preston's housekeeper, Anna Corbin, was beaten to death in the school's basement, her killer never discovered. To date, many have reported encounters with a spectral woman who drifts about the basement, floating straight through the walls, and whose mournful sobs can be heard from just out of sight, while the phantom sound of a gunshot has been known to ring out at random. Lastly, security guards, staff, volunteers, and visitors alike have reported hearing their names being called by a disembodied voice, and many describe the constant feelings of being watched, followed, touched, or even of being grabbed at by a presence unseen. Number 2. La Casa de Estudio La Casa de Estudio, also recognized as the Estudio House, and located off of Mason Street in San Diego, California, is a historic abode turned museum that's recognized both as one of the oldest surviving examples of Spanish architecture in the state, as well as for its association with the 1884 Helen Hunt Jackson novel Ramona, which detailed life in California following its acquisition under America. 
Historically, La Casa was first constructed in 1827 under Jose Maria Estudio and his son, Jose Antonio, who were some of the earlier settlers of the region and whose completed project was widely renowned as one of the finest residences in the whole of Mexican California. Sadly, Jose Maria would pass on in 1830, and later, Jose Antonio would join his father in death in 1852, after which their remaining family would stay at La Casa until 1887, when they moved to Los Angeles and left the property in the hands of a caretaker. Meanwhile, the novel Ramona would pick up steam, and combined with the implementation of the nearby railway, the community would have life breathed back into it under waves of tourism. Despite the legendary fable being nothing more than fiction, visitors would flock to the supposed marriage site of Ramona from far and wide, and eventually, the caretaker would begin to capitalize off attendance numbers and would even sell pieces of the house as souvenirs. Sadly, over the years, La Casa's condition would deteriorate quickly, until 1906 when it was purchased under the San Diego Electric Railway Company, who fully renovated the space and reopened it in 1910 as a Ramona-themed tourist attraction. In 1968, the property was acquired by the state, who restored the expanse to its original condition, and the prestigious abode now stands as a museum, fully furnished as it would have been through the Estudio's ownership. Over its lengthy existence, a number of purported encounters with the supernatural have been documented across La Casa's bounds, with both staff and visitors reporting disembodied footsteps and voices, orbs captured in photography, and the sounds of a party, of phantom music, and even sightings of full-bodied apparitions by dancing about at random times. The ghost of Jose Antonio Estudio, who married Maria Victoria Dominguez on March 1st, has been encountered nearly annually on the anniversary of said wedding, while several traipsing the premises have passed by wedding decorations that have caused them to pause and do a double take, only to find that the strange effects have already disappeared. The chapel is supposedly inhabited by a female entity dubbed Rose, a moniker formed from the smell of roses that she brings with her, while the apparition of a monk in a brown robe has been observed wandering the hallways near. Several informal investigations of the expanse have yielded high EMF levels, extreme temperature fluctuations, flashing red lights recorded from empty rooms, and encounters with a grumpy male presence who commonly takes offense to investigators and who's been known to break equipment or leave hate-filled EVPs on recordings. Lastly, the manifestation of a melancholy woman in Victorian-era clothing has been sighted drifting about La Casa. The ghost of a little girl, also in Victorian-era clothing, has been spied playing happily in the yard. The intimidating presence of a stern man in a vaquero outfit has been viewed hurrying about, usually rushing out of sight. The specter of a tall man in a white shirt is commonly encountered leaning against the structure's back wall, and the reflection of a tall male entity has been known to appear in mirrors, startling those nearby. Number 1. The Queen Mary The Queen Mary, moored at the mouth of the Los Angeles River off Queens Highway in Long Beach, California, is a historic ocean liner turned hotel that, through World War II, was dubbed the Grey Ghost due to her stealth capabilities and coloring, and that boasted the title of being the largest and fastest troop ship of her time, being capable of carrying around 16,000 bodies at up to 30 knots. Historically, this prestigious vessel was constructed under John Brown and Company out of Clydebank, Scotland, as the RMS Queen Mary and would sail as a British ocean liner on her maiden voyage in 1936. The RMS Queen Mary and her sister ship, the RMS Queen Elizabeth, were both fashioned under the purpose of being utilized in a duo weekly express service that operated between Southampton, Chubur, and New York. However, when World War II erupted, the Queen Mary was transformed into a troop ship, and its only fare would include not but Allied soldiers. Following the war, the Queen Mary would be transformed back into a passenger vessel, and accompanied by her sister ship, the Queen Elizabeth would begin a transatlantic passenger service. Sadly, in 1967, after consecutive years of declining profits on the Cunard Line, the Queen Mary was retired, after which she would leave Southampton in October of the same year for the last time, and would be sailed straight to the port of Long Beach, where she remains to this day. Over the years, the Queen Mary would be converted into a floating hotel. In 1971, portions of the ship were opened up to the public, and in 1972, the lodging would welcome its first official guests. 
Most recently, in 2021, the city of Long Beach would assume control of the vessel, which continues to offer its hotel, a museum, and dining options, all the while serving as an infinitely popular tourist attraction. From the time of its mooring and to date, a number of sea fables and accounts of purported paranormal activities surrounding the Queen Mary have surfaced, with staff and visitors to its bounds reporting extreme cold spots, disembodied voices and footsteps, and encounters with apparitions in old-fashioned clothing or uniforms. At the pool, which is actually closed off due to safety concerns, several have told of run-ins with the ghost of a young woman in a tennis skirt near the stairs, as well as with the entities of a lady in a wedding dress accompanied by a little boy in a suit. And elsewhere, a handful of reports detail sightings of a mysterious cloud of steam and of the spirit of a little girl in a blue and white dress that's been known to disappear when noticed. In 1948, in stateroom B340, long before the Queen Mary opened as a lodging, British third-class passenger Walter J. Adamson would pass away spontaneously. And later, in 1966, a woman staying in the same room would report being awakened in the middle of the night to her blankets being pulled off of her person and to the figure of a man at the foot of her bed, after which she let out a scream and rang for the steward, only to watch the form fade into the darkness. More recently, guests to B340 have told of phantom knocks at their doors in the middle of the night, of lights that turn on and off by themselves, and of bathroom faucets discovered running even when rooms are vacant and have been locked for periods of time. Reported across the whole of the Queen Mary and confined to no area in particular are doors that open and close on their own, orbs captured in photography, the feelings of being watched, followed, or of being touched by a presence unseen, and encounters with the ghost of a little girl near the boiler room, who's usually sighted with a doll in one hand and sucking the thumb of her other. Lastly, a rather disturbing account tells of a night in 1966 when an order was issued that the watertight doors in the engine and boiler rooms be closed, after which an 18-year-old crew member from Yorkshire was discovered crushed in hatch door number 13, also referred to as Shaft Alley. While the young man was eventually freed and carried to the hospital, crew members' efforts proved futile as he expired shortly after, some say resulting in his spirit's unrest. An apparition clad in blue overalls and sporting a beard, who it's thought just might be the spirit of this poor lad, has been spied wandering about the area, asking those he passes if they've seen his wrench, and is thought to be responsible for other reports of disembodied footsteps and whistling, as well as of greasy fingerprints that are found inexplicably on guests' clothing and faces. Taking into consideration its intriguing history and coupling that with such an impressive assortment of purported supernatural activity and associated sea fables, we felt there really was no better choice than the Queen Mary as this list's most haunted place in California. Thanks for joining us on our third list of picks for some of the most haunted places in California. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. Pleasant dreams.